I'm Kirsten Delgado, Fox 35 News. Thank you, Kirsten. Back to the governor's race now. Right now, there is no telling who voters, voters are going to choose. Yeah, the latest Q poll has Charlie Crist ahead of Governor Rick Scott by one percentage point, but that, of course, is well within the margin of error. That's why supporters will be out in full force all over Central Florida today, knowing that every single vote counts. Ryan Elijah is live in Studio B with more. Good morning, Ryan. Yeah, John, good morning. It's certainly in an election like this, you realize how every vote can matter. And joining us now, Carlos Smith. He's a Democratic analyst and Bertika Cabrera Morris, a Republican analyst. I want to thank you both for coming in today. We've heard so much about this. A lot of people are happy today's here because the ad stopped. The voting finally takes place. So let's start That's with right. each of you. Tell us why why your side should win in the governor's race. Ladies first. Well, <clears throat> you know, people like me that were here eight years ago um, supported a guy named Charlie Chris. And that guy did not keep up his promises. He first wanted to be uh, vice president, then he wanted to be senator. Uh, he flip-flopped on many things, and then he left the party, went to one party, then he went to another, and now he's at a third party. Differentiator, if we had a guy that came in here four years ago. We did not know who he was. His name is Rick Scott, kept his promise. I'm a businesswoman, I'm a mom, lower tuition, lower taxes, more jobs, Charming guy, Charlie Chris, lousy governor, great governor, Rick Scott. Carlos, I'm guessing you'll have a little different Yeah, I have a little bit of a different opinion than Bertika. Actually, what we've seen in the last days of this campaign is that the momentum is really behind Charlie Chris. He shows Chris. some momentum. It's behind Charlie Chris because his message has really resonated with voters. Voters agree with Charlie on a whole series of issues that are important to Floridians. They agree with Charlie on the need to raise Florida's minimum wage so that working families can afford to put food on the table and that we can grow our economy and create jobs. They agree with Charlie Chris in the need to fully fund our public schools. Rick Scott, in his very first year as governor, cut over a billion dollars out of public education. He cut another $300 million out of university funding. And on top of that, voters agree with Charlie Crist that Floridians deserve affordable access to quality health care. Rick Scott refused to lift a finger to expand uh, access to health care to over a million uninsured residents under the Affordable Care Act. They're ready for someone who's going to lead this state in the right direction. The momentum is behind Charlie Crist. They're ready for someone who's going to be on their side, someone who's going to answer questions. And finally, Rick Scott and Pam Bondi have gotten in the way of marriage equality in our state. Uh, there have been faithful, committed, and loving couples who have been ready to legally marry in our state. And if it hadn't been for Rick Scott and Pam Bondi defending the undefensible, we would have marriage equality. If voters support Charlie Chris and they elect him by 7 p.m. today, they're going to see that the state is going to stop its appeal of the unconstitutional ban on same-sex marriage and we'll finally have marriage equality in our state. Real quick, let's go local races anything you look for not at the governor's level but that you're watching for tonight well Eddie Fernandez we think that Eddie has done a fabulous job in the past eight months since he was elected I think that uh, Bob Cortez um, you know we talked a lot about um, the Democratic Party what they've done and what Charlie has done but really Charlie Chris had done nada you know in the Hispanic community we have more Hispanics running in all local races you're we both have Hispanic and you're both encouraged about that anything you watch for tonight yeah, I'm going to be watching to see how close the legislative races are. You know, in Orange County, what we've seen in the last four years if, is we have seen that this county has become increasingly Democratic. Most of that has to do with the growth of the Puerto Rican population, which continues to relate to the Democratic Party and registered Democrat. We went into Election Day actually in 2010 down 4,000 votes countywide compared to Republicans. Now we're going into Election Day up 14,000 votes to Democrats versus the Republicans countywide. It's going to be an exciting night. And we're we're looking forward to making history. Long night for both of you. Are you ready for it? We are. And, 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 and I'm going to let you know that um, the Democratic Party hasn't helped. I don't know of one candidate that is Hispanic that is running under the Democratic ticket that is going to win tonight. Well, we've got Senator Darren that Soto. Gonna, but he's already in office. We have many that are being helped by the Republican Party. And Governor Scott is going to win tonight. Thank you, Lord, for that. If he doesn't, <laughs> doesn't purge the Hispanics from the voter rolls, we'll the, see. We'll the, see how it goes. He's got the red tie on. So. I know that Republican. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. So there's the debate. A long day in store for many involved. Let's go back to the studio. All right. Thank you, sir. And, of course, you can join us tonight for wall-to-wall -to -wall election coverage. We have the very latest on how Election Day is shaping up, starting with Fox 35 News at 5 o'clock. Then you can join us live on the web from 8 until 9.30. That's when a lot of stuff's going to be happening. And then live breaking election results on Fox 35 News at 10 and 11. It could be a long night.